Those were the first words out of the mouth of the safety manager at DuPont plant that I was going to be working at for six weeks. He said, gentlemen, I know the four of you in here are marketing managers for DuPont's environmental and safety services, but as you work in my plant, if you touch a valve and you don't know what that valve is, you could blow up, boom, you could blow up this plant. And he said, Chris, you might be fine. You might do everything right. But then again, Bob over here, he might turn the wrong valve and boom, you just blew up the plant. The three things I learned as I went home that evening. One, I wasn't going to touch a darn valve on that plant. <laughs> Two, I'm staying away from Bob. And three, I'm increasing my life insurance. This was really going to come home and make a huge impression on me in a couple of years. I was at a plant selling the services of DuPont, both environmental and safety services. And I was with Alex. Now, Alex was a bear of a man, huge man, big, booming voice. And we're going around the plant, and he's showing me the different areas. And he said, Chris, I think we can use you in the environmental section, but our plant is very, he didn't quite get safe out of the mouth when I heard, rrr, 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 sound like a submarine going down. And it was a plant siren indicating that there was an emergency. So I looked at Alex and said, Alex, what's going on? And he's on the phone. He said, Chris, I have no idea. Now, that's really bad with you in the safety manager's presence, and he has no idea what's happening. So finally, he gets hold of Calvin, who was at one of the units, and he said, Calvin, run over to the plant, find out what's happening. So a minute later, I hear over the radio, Alex, you won't believe it. Someone turned the wrong valve. And there's thousands of gallons of ethylene that's coming out. It's under high pressure. It's very hot. It's forming a gas, and it's going toward an open flame. Now, I'm thinking right then, this is not good. <laughs> and if I'm Calvin, I'd be running. And all of a sudden, whoa! And I could feel it, and we were at least 300 yards away. Alex says, Calvin, are you there? We didn't hear from Calvin. But about a second and a half later, whoa! And I went down on my feet. I was on the ground. It was unbelievable. The plant had virtually disappeared. Three weeks later, I had a chance to visit with Calvin. And I said, Calvin, what happened? That was three weeks after he got out of the hospital. And he said, Chris, it was unbelievable. He said, I got over to this area of the plant and someone had turned an eight inch valve they weren't supposed to. It wasn't locked and tagged out and it allowed thousands of gallons of this volatile fluid to leak out, formed into a cloud. And he said, I'm just standing there. I've been at the plant 18 years and I know the cloud is going to hit the open flame in just a second. And my feet are stuck. Have you ever been stuck in life? You've seen something just terrible, and you're not moving? Well, he said, I was stuck, and as soon as that first explosion hit, it was like the hand of God. The fire was coming back, and he said, I, I knew at that point the main plant was going to go. And he said, as fast as I could, I was running. I was running like the wind. Obviously, I wasn't running really fast because people were passing me. And then the explosion and the wave of that explosion threw me over 60 feet. He says, as I was flying through the air, he said, I saw hot metal pieces going right by my head, to the right, to the left. And he said, the hand of God had to be on me because I should have been killed right then. He said, I landed right in a trench about three feet below ground level in the mud. And he said, then the fire rolled over me. And he said, you can't believe this. He said, I could smell something burning. And then I realized it was me. He had lost all the skin on the back of his head and his hands. He had a fireproof Nomax suit on. That's the only thing that wasn't burnt. And I thought about that later. And the reason I've told you this story is a few months ago, 
I was at a gas station. Now, I'm not even gonna ask you if you all fill up with gas yourself because the old Texaco stations are gone. The guys that used to come out when I was a kid filled up the car, checked the oil, checked the tire pressure. Now we have to do it ourselves. So I'm at the gas station, I'm getting out of the car, and all of a sudden a red pickup's leaving. Yeah, maybe you've done this. I'm guilty. Had left the gas hookup in his car, in his truck, and ripped it off, and ripped the hose off. Well, this was an older station, and it didn't separate where it's supposed to. The gas came out of the top. The hose ripped off at the very top of the pump, and gas is going everywhere. And all of a sudden, I'm remembering this life experience I had just lived through and thinking, oh my gosh, we could have an explosion. And I'm in the middle of it. So as Calvin was for a second, my feet were kind of stuck, and then I realized, Emergency shutoff. Look for the emergency shutoff. Always be aware of everything around you. So I'm looking, I'm looking, and I can't find the darn thing. I tell you, this was an older station. I finally, it seems like minutes, but it was probably about 30 or 40 seconds, I go inside, and I said, where is the emergency shutoff? And the guy kind of looks at me and says, well, sir, uh, it's behind the counter here. I said, well, hit it. Call 911. Get a fire truck out here. We need to wash all this stuff down. And then I run outside, and there's seven different pumps, and I go up to each car. I said, don't start your car. There's gas leaking. There's fumes all over the place. Could blow us up. Finally get to the seventh pump, and there's this just gorgeous lady. She's just red hair, and she's got this beautiful lace outfit on. And she's talking to her girlfriend on the phone and just having a good time, and she's smoking a cigarette. Now in my life experience, four times in my life, I have seen people smoke at a station. I've gone up to them all four times, and I said, would you please put out that cigarette? They did. But I didn't want to ask, and we'll call her the lady in lace, to put out her cigarette because she might throw it on the ground, and then boom! And I might be in worse shape than Calvin was in. I might be up at the pearly gates. So I ran right up to her. I took that cigarette out of her mouth. I crushed it in my hand. Instead of saying thank you. And I, I think I was saying a few things to her like, Can't, are you stupid? I mean, there's gas everywhere. And she gave me this look. And if looks could kill. <laughs> Whew. 30 minutes later, as the fire truck washed off everything and we were ready to leave, the lady in lace is still over there. <laughs> Giving me that look. I figured it was one of three things. One, she's in shock. Two, if looks could kill. Three, she feels really bad that she almost blew herself up and everyone else. I'm hoping it's three, but I think it's two. So friends, if you ever go up to a gas station and you see that maybe someone had put the, the hose in and it's overflowing the tank and there's gas all over, or someone ripped the hose out and there's gas, be aware of everything around you. Develop a safety attitude. Hit that emergency shutoff switch. And look around for that lady in lace. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Chris Lewis.